What's going on guys? Welcome back to Raider World. So in this episode on the El Dorado Project, we have the Hogworks Stretch Rear Fender. All right, so welcome back to another episode on the El Dorado Project. We're gonna be changing out that stock rear fender on the 2021 Street Glide, and we're going with the Hogworks Stretch Rear Fender. This is the El Dorado Gold, now Hogworks does offer a variety of color match options for whatever bike you might have. Now this is made out of high quality grade steel. You have your ABS plastic fender tip. You have your integrated LED run brake turn signals with smoke lens. You have your license plate holder with a light. You have this red reflector that you can easily remove. You have all your mounting hardware and then your wiring harness. Now this is going to look great whether you have the Harley Davidson OEM CVO saddlebags, or if you have the Hogwarts stretch saddlebags, this is gonna match up perfectly. So let's get this stock rear fender off and then we'll get this new one on. Let's go. All right, so for tools, I use a foot pound torque wrench, a couple of size ratchets, three quarter inch stubby wrench, T40 T handle, three quarter inch socket, half inch socket, seven sixteenth socket, five sixteenth socket, T40 Torx, a stubby T40 Torx, 3 16 hex bit, six millimeter hex bit, a couple of size of extensions, flathead screwdriver, Phillips head screwdriver, a picking tool, cable tie cutters, plastic prying tool, some blue Loctite, and some cable tie mounts. All right, so first thing I'll do is get everything out of the way. I'll remove the seat, the left and right saddlebags, and the left and right side covers. So I'll disconnect the tri-bar light and I'll also disconnect the rear tail light. You just pop off this plastic cover. You can use your fingers or a flathead screwdriver. So you have your tri-bar on this side and your rear tail light on this side. So I'll disconnect it here. You have tabs on the top and on the bottom. You just pull up on those and then work it out. So I'll loosen up this nut on this wire retention clip that's on this steel plate. And for this, I'm using a 716 socket. Now I'll remove the fender extension that has the tri bar. You have three nuts on each side. And for this, I'm using a 716 socket with an extension. So you have your wiring harness for your tri bar going down here. You'll go ahead and just pull this off. It's just held on by these two retaining clips. Now that I have everything disconnected, I'll go ahead and remove it. So now I'll remove the fender screws. You have two on each side. You have one right behind here. This is your saddlebag mount. You just remove this and the screw is located right behind here. And then you have another one right here and these are a T40. So this space is a little tight to get a socket in there. So you can just use a T40 T handle. So you have a metal bracket that's behind the fender that runs along here. And then you have these two nuts securing it down. It's a T40 torque screw with a half inch nut. So I have that 716 nut on the backside that I loosened up. 
I'll go ahead and remove that nut now so I can take out this bracket. So on the front of the fender, you have these nuts on each side. This is what your screw goes into to secure the fender. It's a three quarter inch nut. I'll go ahead and remove these and it'll make it a little easier to remove the rear fender. So now I'm gonna remove this screw. You have one on the other side as well. It's gonna release some tension so I can remove the rear fender. And these screws are a T40. I'll remove this connector that's connected to the front of the fender. It's just held on by this Christmas tree retention clip. All right, so now that I have everything disconnected, I'm gonna carefully remove the rear fender. Since I won't be using the tri bar anymore, I'll go ahead and remove this wiring harness. I'll follow it back. I'll cut some zip ties along the way and get it disconnected. So I'll loosen up this fuse panel so I can work this wire out and I'm using a half inch socket. So here you have your rear antenna just held on by this one screw and then you have your wire that runs towards the front. This will have to be relocated to a different position because those lights that sit on the back of the rear fender sit right in here. So to remove this screw, I'm using a 316th hex bit. So I'll get this antenna out of the way for now and I'll relocate it later. Just unscrew it. Unplug it. If you have a split grommet, you can take it off. And that's pretty much it. All right, so now we're getting into the new rear fender. Just a quick overview, what I have on the table. So Hogworks does provide you with two relocation brackets for your antennas. So if you have two antennas, they do provide you uh, with connections and relocation brackets for those. You have all new mounting hardware. Now you are gonna reuse the stock screws and you are gonna reuse that 7 16 nut and washer that we took off this backing plate that sat behind the fender. For this wiring harness, I'll get into that once we get all the connections made and I'll show you how to get this connected. But first things first, let's get this red reflector off. You have a 7 16 nut right here. I'll go ahead and remove this. Now I'll remove these two nuts and there are 5 16 So getting it back on, just make sure your gasket is properly seated. And if your screws fell out, just run them back through the license plate holder. Take your wiring, run it through. Make sure everything's lined up. I'll take my bracket, reinstall this. Now, before I tighten it down, I'll check again to make sure the gasket is properly seated all the way around. So I'm using a Phillips head screwdriver on one side and a 5 16 socket on the other. So I'll get this cover back on. You have this open slot that your wiring will come out of. And just get these down nice and snug. You don't want to over tighten. So what you receive from Hogworks to make your electrical connection, you have your melt connector, you have your rubber seal or gasket, and then you have this orange retaining clip. Now when you're putting in your terminals, 
you have a number one slot and a number two slot. You just want to make sure those match up with the other connector for the positive and the negative. Make sure they're fully seated. You'll hear it click. So now they're locked in. Give it a slight tug and that's how it should look. Take your rubber gasket or your seal, put it around there. So now you'll take this plastic retaining clip, you'll stick it inside of here. Now before I install the rear fender, I like to check and make sure that all my lights work. So I'll make all my connections, I'll check the brakes, I'll check my turn signals, and make sure everything is in the right spot. Now it's on you how you wanna run your wires. I'll show you how I'm gonna run mine. I do have some extra cable tie mounts that I had laying around, so I'll clean the surface so that way they have a good spot to adhere to. So I'll just have this connection coming out of here. Now with the wiring harness running underneath the fender, just double check it, make sure it's not making any contact with the wheel. All right, so before I forget, I'm gonna go ahead and get this seat retention nut off of here. You have this retaining ring. I'm gonna go ahead and switch this out and put it on to the new fender. So just have your hand underneath to catch the nut. This retaining clip will pop right out, just slide it. It'll pop right out just like that. So here you have your seat retention nut and the retaining ring. So to reinstall it on the fender, just line up these notches. Take your retaining ring and then just slap that on. So Hogworks does provide you with four new mounting bosses. You have this notch that line up with this hole here. So you'll set it inside until it locks into place. And then you have your nut. So this is the stock one that I removed. You are gonna reuse the washer. So I'll install the rear ones for now. And then once we get the fender on the bike, I'll install the front ones. You'll see it's not set properly, so just turn it until it fully seats. I'll put back on the stock washer and then I'll install the nut. So these are what your stock screws go into that secures the fender into place. So the torque value on these mounting bosses is 15 to 20 foot pounds. Now, before I install the new fender, just to make it a little easier, I'm going to go ahead and remove the four point docking hardware. You have two screws holding these in and they're a T40. All right, so now it's time to install the new rear fender. Same way I took the stock one off, I'll get this one on. I'll apply some pressure on the sides just to get it to squeeze in so I don't scratch anything up and slide it on. So I forgot to mention, you do have to have your lights disconnected so you can run them through this open slot. Now I'll go ahead and assemble the two front mounting bosses. Now I'll take the stock screws and get them in. I'll get them all started first and then I'll tighten them down all the way. So the torque value for these fender screws, it's calling for 15 to 20 foot pounds. So I am using a torque spit that's small enough that fits inside of here. Don't forget to connect your lights.
Now don't forget to install your saddlebag mounts. Now I'll reinstall the support bracket strut screws. So the torque value for these screws is 15 to 20 foot pounds. All right, since we already have the Harley Davidson four point docking hardware removed, this is a great opportunity to install the Hogworks four point docking hardware kit uh, for 14 and up touring models. Hogworks does offer these on their website in black or chrome. So let's say you're going from black to chrome or chrome to black. This is a great product from Hogworks that you can get to switch that over. So I'll go ahead and unbox this and we'll get these installed on the bike. All right, so in the box, you have your left and your right docking hardware, you have your mounting hardware, and you have your instructions. Now looking at these, the finish on here looks good. You have your Hogworks logo right here. Now Hogworks does offer caps that you can cap these up when they're not in use. Just makes it look a lot cleaner. So let's go ahead and get these installed. So installing the four point docking hardware is really simple. Just install it the same way you took it off. You want this part of the docking hardware going forward. So your Hogworks logo is gonna be facing inboard. Don't forget your washer. And I'm also using blue Loctite. And to tighten these down, I'm using a six millimeter hex bit. Now that I have everything mounted, I'll go ahead and zip tie all my wires back. So whatever wires you might've had here, go ahead and zip tie those back and secured and away from the suspension and the tire. Now I'll reinstall the stock rear fender bracket. This is the bracket that sat behind the rear fender along here. You have your two screws on each side. Then you have that 7 16 nut and washer that's gonna secure onto here. All right, last thing we need to do is just make our connection and that's it. This only goes in one way. Just give it a slight tug, make sure it's secure. And that's pretty much it. All right, let's go. So in this episode on the Eldorado project, we have the Hogworks stretch front fender. Stretch front fender. So in this episode on the Eldorado project, on the Eld Eldorado, Eldorado. All right, so we're back at it on the Eldorado project. We're gonna go ahead and stretch out the stretch out. It's already stretched out, a couple of screws, and then um, yeah, that's pretty much it. No, it's not, there's a lot more to it. We're gonna be taking off that stretch rear fender it's not stretched, it's just regular. It's kind of stretched, it's got that whatever light on the back, the tri bar. This is gonna look great whether you have the Hogworks stretch saddlebags or if you have the Holly Davidson, Holly, you have the Holly Davidson. Oh man, Holly Davidson, Holly. I feel like I'm from the islands. I'm from the islands, it's Holly. 